My name is Ashley Wallington. I've been a stay-at-home mom since December of 2014. Prior to that, I was a supervisor in a medical suite for a reputable DDA agency. Um, one thing that convinced me to really stay home would be my education and then looking after my son. So I thought that I would take that time and opportunity to invest in the both of them. I attend the University of Baltimore and I'm majoring in health systems management. On Saturday is I'm in school from 8 to 4.30. It's definitely a challenge, but like anything else in life, you adjust. So I've made that adjustment and now it's my own little personal routine. So, And actually my Saturday has become my calm day. Even though it's a school day, it's my day away from home. Well, the benefits have been more time at home with the children. And that's the plan. Being able to take longer time with them, completing projects and home assignments, and the disadvantages would be just the constant schoolwork. Mommy's up at 12 o'clock at night typing and just things like of that nature. I did come in with my daughter's class and we completed a project for, um, I think it was National Police Day. I really like to help out on her sports team when she plays track. So, you know, it's kind okay. of a collective thing with every parent. You're looking after all the different children, especially during the track meets. You have to make sure that they have their stickers and stuff. Okay, so normally I wake up about 5 a.m. I wake my daughter up, get her clothes and stuff ready for school. Then I come down and fix breakfast for my husband and the children. I make sure everybody's lunches are packed. And then I throw something on in a hurry <laughs> so I can take them to school. Um, we try to leave the house around 7 a.m. And we travel over to Northwest Baltimore where she attends school. And I'll drop her off to her school. Some mornings I'll stop and go visit my mom because she's on that side of town. But if not, then I normally come back in and I'll get to housework. Or if I have home assignments, I'll try to work on some homework. At 2.25, that's when she's dismissed. So I'll go and pick her up from school. And on Wednesdays, like today, she has dance practice. So normally I'm coming home and I'm kind of still tidying up getting dinner ready, making sure that she has her homework completed, and then we're out the door to dance. And dance practice is over at 7, and we'll be back in here about 8 o'clock, just for enough time to get dinner on. <laughs> or finish or get them to eat and have them go to bed. So, so for that particular project, I had talked to my daughter's teacher about possibly doing something to bridge the gap between younger kids and law enforcement. It was at a time where it was a lot of things going on. There still is a lot of things going on. So she thought it was a perfect idea and we came up with the idea of doing a hand for National Police Day. And the hand would basically say thank you for giving us a hand. So on each finger the children had to list the ways that the police officers helped them. And it was just to kind of let them know that, you know, not everybody is against you. Some people are for you. And um, the children, they were actually excited to complete this task. I didn't know how they were going to receive it because different people come from different homes and different backgrounds. But all the children were excited to complete it. The teacher was excited to be a part of it. And I was actually excited to be able to initiate something like that and facilitate it. So we did take it down to the Northwest District and we were able to hand it to an officer herself. And I took some pictures with her with the poster and she was really grateful. She said, and um, I was able to speak to someone at the Northwest District and it was a community resource officer, I believe, but I still have his number and we talked about different activities we could plan in the future for the children. And we also talked about how it was important that it was a relationship that, you know, you have to build it somewhere. You have to start somewhere. Like, you're responsible for cookings? Mm -hmm. And cleaning the house? Yes. You do that? Mm -hmm. um, grocery shopping? Yes. Everybody's laundry? Yes. Folding and putting away? Yes. Um, when they're sick, you're expected to change your plans, mm -hmm. stay home, take care of them? Oh, I am the doctor, the I nurse. I did that juice. And everything I in between. So, psychologist eventually. My husband, he won't go to the doctors. I'm like, okay, so now I have to diagnose you. Then I have to treat you. And then even down to the baby. Just running back and forth for appointments, scheduling all of their appointments. Just trying to stay on top of everything. So. Keep your conferences. Yes. You also Just take care of the dog, right? Last month. Hmm. Take care of the dog. Yes. Day. And the house. 
your mm -hmm. your home when someone's got to come do repairs or mm -hmm. um, the lift of furniture, everything. You don't pay for babysitting. Yeah. Why? Like we have so many hands. And um, my sister and I, whenever we want to go out, because she has a busy schedule, she'll let me know in advance, hey, Ash, you know, Matt and I, we want to go out. Are you free this weekend? I'm like, sure, send the kids over. And she'll send the kids over. And the other way around, if I want to go out with my husband, all we have to do is give each other a phone call. And we may be busy, but we're always home. So even if right now, if she called and say, hey, we got reservations for tonight, can the kids come over? Sure. I do think the benefit of me being home is I can sit down with him and like today I was teaching him how to spell his name and he caught on so quickly. I'm able to go over flashcards with him but this is the letter A, A, uh, Apple. So that is the benefit, being able to have that extra time. Oh yeah, I think the level of care is definitely different because you have more time and attention to put into him. Like at this age now, his mind is a sponge. So I was telling my friend that she was saying, you know, he talks really well to not be too. Like, he has full sentences. And I said, I think it's because he's home all day around adults. You know, I'm talking out loud to myself like a crazy person. <laughs> I'm talking to him. I'm using full sentences. It's a little bit different from sending him to daycare where it's a, a herd of children and you have one provider who's half the time not really engaged with the children on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Now, I do think there are good yeah. learning centers, but they are normally the ones that's more expensive, and I can't afford that right now. <laughs> so that we were cutting costs and eliminating waste. And so one of the things was, I said, you know what? I'm breastfeeding. I'm making all of his baby food from scratch. I'm not purchasing baby food. So those are all the things that I did to save money. So for the past almost two years, the only thing we really had to purchase for him would be pull-ups and wipes. And I can't honestly say a lot of clothes. I know how to bargain shop. I'm checking prices in the supermarkets. I'm comparing prices. And making his food, not only was it beneficial to him, you know, with nutritional-wise, but for me, it didn't cost anything. You buy three or four different vegetables or fruits, and I would get enough to last for a while. And now we have a big backyard, so I'm pretty sure in a few years with the sun hat out picking my fresh tomatoes, and, you know, that's the type of family I come from. I'm very Southern, so, you know, my family always made their own wine. They always grew their own greens and vegetables, so. I'm looking forward to continuing that tradition.